नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टी स्पेशल लाइव फोन इन प्रोग्राम अ स्पेशल प्रोग्राम ऑफ वेबिनार सीरीज ऑन साइबर सेफ्टी एंड सिक्योरिटी माई नेम इज तानवी खुराना एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोग्राम वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टॉपिक इमर्जिंग फ्रॉड्स एंड सेफ प्रैक्टिस इन बैंकिंग वेल वी ऑल यूज इंटरनेट बैंकिंग एंड वी नीड सम प्रिकॉशंस वी नीड टू नो सर्टन प्रिवेसी सेटिंग्स सो दैट वी कैन बी सिक्योर एंड आर अकाउंट्स कैन नॉट बी हैक्ट so this this is what we are going to discuss and uh, this entire theme of uh, this month is financial safety in cyber safety so uh, 1st of june was the first wednesday of this month that was the cyber jagrukta divas and the series was started that day only and if after first it was the 3rd of june where we continued the same theme and then we are today here with another topic that that i just uh, mentioned that is emerging frauds and safe practices in banking so if you have any questions any queries please reach out to us share your questions through our uh, phone number which is 8800440559 you watching us live on pme vidya channel number 6 to channel number 12 and also on our youtube channel which is ncert official in the live chat box you can write down your questions queries and share them with us so this is a whole series and you can participate in this program you can register yourself there will be a quiz which will be given to you on next friday which is 17th of june so you have to be ready for that and you have to watch all these programs so if you haven't registered i would request you to please register yourself right now and uh, let me introduce you to our today's experts we have in our studio shri sanjay kumar welcome sir thank you thank you for the nice introduction and i would like to we'll begin uh, let me just introduce you further to our audience and when then we'll begin okay. sir is an assistant commandant uh, from i4c and we also have with us dr deepak kumar welcome sir thank you ma'am so uh, he is a cyber threat intelligence professional and uh, like you can see on your screens cyber safety at the rate cied.nic.in that is the email id this is again one of the mediums through which you can connect with us you can be a part of this program and share your questions so let's uh, begin this whole program this whole discussion on uh, emerging frauds and safe practices and let's just ask uh, our first expert that is uh, shri sanjay kumar so what exactly are we going to discuss in this particular program as i said before also thank you for the night nice, nice introduction and this opportunity to be on the stage first of all i would like to show my gratitude towards the ministry of education ncert on behalf of ministry of home affairs indian cyber crime coordination center under the guidance of uh, joint secretary shri ashutosh agnihotri ji uh, cis division mha as per the initiative of mha it has it has been proposed that every first wednesday of every month we will be celebrating cyber jagrukta divas that is cyber awareness day and this uh, web series is in the line of that initiative taken by mha and ministry of education has been very helpful in that regard now coming to today's topic that is emerging fraud and safe practices in banking uh, this topic will be covered in in seven sections first we will talk about financial technologies which is about how technology and financial services merge in this day and age and second is contemporary banking which is this state of affairs in the current banking system third we will talk about financial cyber crimes we will talk about all the modes which are available to user today in banking world and we will talk about how those modes are under attack by cyber fraudsters and in the second section of our presentation my colleague mr deepak ji will help me with the explanation of some specific frauds that we have been observing in the indian cyber crime coordination center as we have already discussed theme for this month is financial security in digital space to understand this theme we need to understand what are the finances that we should worry about and to understand we need to understand 
how technology is affecting this. So first, let's talk about finances. What is finance? Finance is finance is how we manage our money and how we manage our investments. And if we look at finance, it can be broadly categorized into three categories. First is public finance. In public finance, we talk about how government is how government is uh, regulating the economy of the country. And the second would be corporate finance. Corporate finance talks about how corporates in our country or in the world are managing their funds and how they're managing their investments and how they're uh, looking after their uh, funding structures. Third, which we are focusing on is personal finance. Personal finance talks about banking that an individual does, budgeting he does, investments he has interest in. So personal finance is something we'll be focusing upon. And personal finance also encompasses uh, also encompasses all the financial services provided by financial service providers, like as we know, traditional banks are there, which provide those services. And it all is encompassed under personal finance. So how personal finance we have understood as like having a savings bank account or making some withdrawal from the bank, but in this day and age, it all has changed. Technology has affected every which way we use banking in our life. So when financial technology and financial services come together, it makes FinTech. So it's a short for financial technology as we can understand. And it is basically nothing but application of technology to improve financial services. Uh, when we talk about it, there are many aspects of FinTech, that is trans transactions of money, taking loans, raising money for businesses. Uh, say if I wanted to start a business, then I'd have to get a loan from the bank. And uh, there are many ways, digital ways in, in today's world by which I can take that loan. And managing investments. Many apps and digital platforms have come through which I can manage my investments. Given the rise in digital transactions, we also have to worry about how these modes of transactions are open to bad gaze of cyber forces. Uh, as we can see on the slide, there are many aspects of fintech. Blockchain is there, payments are there, different kinds of payments that we do on the online world or on the offline world. Exchanges that happen of asset or money. Research that is undergoing. Digital money that is on the cards. And we can see the fiscal year is target for our government to come up with the digital rupees. And online banking, investments, and crowdfunding. We will. Uh, go through these topics one by one in the next slide. Uh, this slide gives us an overview of what is happening in fintech in today's world. The first point which is mobile payment apps. Mobile payment apps, we can think of many things. If I have a bank, in, if I have an account in certain bank, then I have a mobile banking app of that uh, bank. And if I'm using some UPI account, then I have that UPI app on my uh, on my mobile phone. And if I use internet banking, then I can also use that on my mobile. So all of that has to be affected or developed as the fintech develops in our world. Second point we can see is peer-to-peer -peer lending. When we talk about peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uh, it is nothing but person-to-person -person lending. Traditionally, banks have been doing that. Banks have been lending money to us, and I have to, uh, I have to assure banks that I would be able to pay back whatever I am getting the loan from that bank. But nowadays, platforms are coming where people uh, become borrowers and people themselves become lenders. So people have those online platforms where do where they uh, come up with these peer-to-peer -peer lending. But with the advancement of technology, what we see is regulation doesn't cope up with the advancement space. We also have to manage, we come up with the regulation so that people are not duped by frauds which are happening in peer-to-peer -peer lending and other aspects as we will talk about further. The third aspect is cryptocurrency using blockchain. We have seen for the last decade that cryptocurrency has become a big topic among us and uh, it is also one of the aspects of fintech. Uh, the next one is crowdfunding. Uh, crowdfunding is mainly collecting small amounts of money or maybe a little bigger amount of money uh, from 
a large amount of individuals to fund, let's say, a startup company or uh, a, an individual who is under some kind of emergency, may it be a health emergency. So crowdfunding is also done in many digital platforms and this is also a technology which has been introduced to us lately in the recent few years. The next one is InsuTech. It talks about technology, using technology in insurance business. So earlier we can see that insurances had uh, limited options. Nowadays, uh, using AI, using new age technology, we can find out how we can uh, modify those schemes and fit it according to the uh, target uh, individuals we want the uh, insurance policy for. Let's say we want them to customize according to the needs of a person who is living in certain area and we can develop those uh, insurance policies according to people living in different parts of the world. Other than these things written, there is wealth tech which talks about digital asset management and uh, there are certain and many apps which we ourselves are uh, acquainted with through which we can uh, manage our investments, we can manage uh, our investment in different funds or let's say different stocks or uh, other ways of managing our assets. And under wealth tech, there is a new term which is coming up which is called robo advisor. So it's nothing but how uh, AI and robotic process automation is being used to give advice to a person how he or she should invest in different investment aspects. So when we talk about these technologies, we are not talking to just introduce them. We are talking how all of these have penetrated into our lives. We are in some way influenced by these technologies or someone, somebody we know in our lives is uh, influenced by these technologies and we need to know what are the uh, aspects we should be aware about and how we can prevent uh, falling into a trap in these new technologies. So the awareness is the main purpose of talking about these new coming up technologies. In the next slide, we will see the evolution of the FinTech, we will just go through it so that we can understand how FinTech has uh, arisen in the past few decades. First, ATMs. ATMs we have seen since we uh, since we have started understanding things. So in the late 1960s, Barclays came up with ATMs and then the digital stock exchange came, which was in 1971. And then there's uh, the dot coms and internet came and the digital banking platforms started coming up in 1996. And after that, PayPal, which we all are acquainted with in certain way because we have heard the stories. and. Uh, that came around in 1998 and uh, after that in 2009 cryptocurrency which is again an aspect of financial technologies it came up around 2009 and at the same time we saw mobile uh, we saw that they, they, the technology came through which we could transfer money from mobile to mobile and uh, in 2011 we could, uh, user could manage money and make transactions on their smartphones. 2013, we saw all digital alternatives to traditional banking. So the concept of new banks also came along. New banks is nothing but without having traditional physical bank branches, we could have all of that infrastructure online and we could provide savings accounts and different kinds of accounts and services online to the users. And advances in AI, RPA that we have already talked about is uh, artificial intelligence and robotic process automation has enabled greater efficiencies in banking and it is an ongoing process. Nowadays, whenever we go through a website of a bank, we see that there is a chatbot, which is a product of AI. We see that our uh, applications are processed are much faster, which is again a process of robotic process automation. And there are many processes which, which have uh, you know, doubled in speed and we see that very a day or two takes to uh, go through some queries that we put up in front of the banks. So all these technologies are helping our banks and financial sector to increase uh, its efficiency. Now after looking at the development of financial technology, we see the current scenario, the contemporary banking. In the middle we can see there is our bank. and. Surrounding it, we see the services which are provided to the user. So I am connected with the bank, with my bank, through these services. One by one, we will talk about it. And the first one on the top, we see mobile banking. Mobile banking is nothing but different ways we use uh, our mobiles to do banking. Let's say we have an app of certain bank in our mobile and we transfer money or do shopping through that or uh, 
that is e-commerce or we understand that there is no need to go to the bank or to the ATM. The second is UPI that is Unified Payment Interface. UPI came along in 2016. Uh, it is running under the NPCI that is National Payments Corporation of India uh, under the directions of RBI. Uh, UPI has been a game changer in the last few years we see. Uh, the latest figures as they have come up, more than 1 lakh crore uh, worth of transactions took place in only May and more than 600 crore transactions were done with the value of 1 lakh, uh, 1 lakh crore rupees, more than 1 lakh crores, uh, crore rupees if I am correct. And the next one is credit cards. Again, we all are acquainted with how to use credit cards and then is ATMs, automated teller machines, which, are, which have been there for the longest of times. Uh, then debit cards, uh, again we are acquainted with what debit cards are, we all use it and there is bank prepaid cards. There are certain cards, uh, certain cards which banks provide to uh, avail certain services. Let's say I was going to some foreign country, then I could take the bank prepaid card and go to that country and use that card for uh, my expenses. And there is a AEPS, which is Aadhaar Enabled Payment System. It is again a system uh, which uses our Aadhaar registration, bank name and fingerprint captured in the Aadhaar registration process for making any fund transfers or uh, let's say making withdrawals. It is up to 10,000 rupees. Uh, then the next is USSD which is unstructured supplementary service data. It is a mobile banking service and it is a service which does not require our mobile to be connected with the internet and uh, that the code written just left of it which is which says star double nine hash. Uh, it is another way of banking which makes uh, people who are unbanked and people who don't have access to the internet they can connect and use their services banking services make withdrawals uh, or make banking transactions using this service. Then there is POS which is point of sale again people who are living in the cities and people who are regularly going to retail shops and malls they use point of sale uh, points or they are also called point of purchase where we use our debit cards, our credit cards, our let's say bank prepaid cards to make that purchase and the mer it's a relationship between the customer and the merchant. Merchant has that point of sale. Next, the next is mobile wallets. Again we have seen such a surge in development of mobile wallets in recent times and uh, this is the uh, mobile wallet is a virtual wallet that stores payment uh, payment card information on our mobile device. Next is internet banking. Internet banking again it is uh, also known as net banking or online banking. Now so these were the various ways which we, uh, by which we can use our banking system and now we come into the various uh, ways cyber fraudsters are looking at these modes and targeting us so that they can dupe us into uh, losing some of our digital assets or money. First is internet banking. Internet banking is uh, targeted by phishing, phishing through emails. We get certain links and we click on those and we will go to a website which will ask for our credentials and we uh, give our credentials and by this way cyber fraudsters, criminals have our credentials. In internet banking two things are uh, essential which is uh, our credentials and the second thing is OTP. So these two things are targeted by cyber criminals and the second one is SIM swap uh, fraud which is done by making uh, another SIM on the same SIM we have so that they can get our OTPs. Third is Keylogger. Keylogger is a malicious software which is uh, installed into our software using certain phishing links or using drive-by downloads or there are various ways to get a malicious software into our system so that uh, cyber fraudsters can know what we have, what we are typing on our devices. So whenever we type our credentials, whenever we type our passwords, they get those things and they uh, empty our accounts basically. And the third one is credential stuffing. So many cyber fraudsters are collecting uh, collecting credentials from different data breaches that are happening that we hear about uh, now and again and they sometimes sell those <coughs> credentials to other fraudsters who can use that to again uh, commit cyber financial frauds and uh, the second one is ATM. ATM has three main concerns which are card skimming. Card skimming is whenever you go into an ATM and you find that 
there is a normal looking ATM device and you in insert your card, but there is a device which is put over the uh, put over the uh, instrument where you insert your card. So what happens whenever you enter your card, the magnetic strip copies the information into the device which is placed by Cyber Foster and so that he has our credential and he has our card details and hidden cameras are also, uh, also found in ATM so that they can know what our, AT or what our ATM codes are and the third one is no cash fraud. No cash fraud is nothing but they have some uh, attachments, metal attachments or different devices which they place in the device so that whenever we enter uh, our card and do the transaction and it shows that our withdrawal ha is completed but money doesn't come out and we are worried that money hasn't come out and we call the bank and we call the uh, we call NCRP uh, the number 1930 but we don't understand the money has come out but it's stuck in the device and when whenever we leave the ATM and the uh, cyber foster come back, uh, comes back into the ATM and then he gets the money which is stuck in the ATM because he has that uh, uh, attachment in the device. The third is USSD, which is supporting fraud. As we have learned that there is no need of internet for using USSD service. We have a code which is star double nine uh, hash, and using some using some uh, UPI IDs or let's say phone number of some other person, which is MMID, and we can make transactions. So if you get a call saying that you are getting a call from certain customer care, some support team, and they ask you to dial this number using this code. If I don't know that this code is for USSD transaction, then I end up making the transaction without knowing that my account is being emptied. And the third one is, uh, fourth one is mobile banking. Uh, we are talking about different kinds of cyber frauds, which is not fixed that this kind of fraud will happen under this category only. As I'm talking about wishing and smishing under mobile banking, but wishing is nothing but uh, fraud voice calls. You get a call and uh, the cyber fraudster, who is, whoever is calling you, he, sh he shows some kind of emergency or he will try to impersonate somebody, he will try to impersonate somebody who is uh, important to you, somebody, let's say your boss or somebody who has uh, high authority to you and then he'll ask you to make some transactions and you end up making that transactions. But the same thing can happen under different uh, categories of modes we have talked about in the previous slides. So wishing and smishing. Smishing is about SMSs we get. Uh, in the SMSs we get uh, certain links. If we click those links, we might uh, get, uh, let's say, uh, a URL where we'll find there is, which is which looks exactly similar to the mobile banking browser we use in our mobile, but it's exactly duplicate or fake of that uh, mobile banking browser. And so it creates uh, confusion in front of that. The next one is mobile wallet. Uh, I'll, the call merging fraud is there, KYC fraud is there, and QR code fraud is there. Uh, call merging is when the call is merged, and the KYC fraud is whenever somebody calls you, asking about your KYC and showing that it's very important and urgent right now to do certain things, and then it is again uh, similar to wishing. The next is QR code frauds. We have talked about QR code frauds in the previous uh, session in our web series, so I'll skip over that. Uh, the next is AEPS fraud, and we have seen that fingerprint cloning fraud happens in AEPS because only fingerprints is required to make some transactions, and you need somebody's Aadhaar code, uh, Aadhaar number that is, to make the transaction, and only the fingerprint cloning is done to commit that fraud. The next is debit, credit, and uh, bank prepaid cards. The first is dumpster diving fraud. We see that we are not too worried about whenever we make a transaction. We take out our bill and we take out a receipt and throw it in the bin or we uh, leave our information online sometimes, let's say whatever transaction I'm making, it also has information regarding the transaction ID and regarding my card also. So we should be more careful with those things. And uh, there's spear phishing uh, attacks. Spear phishing is a kind of phishing uh, it's targeted phishing basically. So let's say I'm targeting people who have accounts in certain banks. Let's say I have, uh, I have uh, uh, finalized a bank and I'm targeting everybody, sending messages to everybody, emails to everybody and telling them you are from a certain bank and we need to do this. So that I'm targeting and uh, finding out people who are from certain bank and uh, committing fraud through that. The next is identity theft. 
uh, after that, which happens by using Aadhaar or PAN card details, and again, we get wishing cards to get OTP from it. Uh, the next one is electronic pickpocketing. So, debit cards, bank prepaid cards, and credit cards have magnetic strip, which have uh, information regarding that card and the transaction we make in the current process. So, sometimes without making any contact, we end up giving away our, uh, our credentials or information in the magnetic strip of the card. Next is point of sale, which has card skimming and data breaches. Card skimming we have already talked about. Uh, sometimes uh, they have devices to again copy the information that is in the card. And next is data breaches. As we see, uh, the point of sale devices are with every small vendor and everywhere in the market. So what happens, they don't have security and they don't know uh, if the data, the transaction data which I am giving there by making the transaction is uh, safe or not. Next is UPI. As we know, UPI has become one of the biggest way of making transactions. Uh, and uh, we talked about the data has just have come out for uh, month of May. Under UPI, we have seen fake mobile apps. We use various apps to use the UPI services. And we have seen those apps which are on the official stores for Android or Apple. And there are many apps which are a spoof of those apps are on the website in AP, APK forms or uh, for the iOS device also. So whenever we uh, download those apps from uh, unofficial links and we use those links to make any transactions or let's say they are quite similar, they look very similar to uh, the interfaces exactly the same as the, as the app we have been used to use. But uh, the people get duped by the similarity of the both apps. Second is SIM cloning. We have already talked about SIM swapping. Third is unverified links. Many times we get websites which are not official websites of making some e-commerce transactions, making some shopping on the website, but we follow those websites and see that whenever we enter our details and they take those, take, uh, the cyber forces take uh, those details we have entered and that website not being the legitimate websites uh, gives away our details and also the password to the cyber foster. Uh, next is remote screen monitoring. Sometimes we get calls from uh, fosters and they impersonate some support team or some uh, customer care team and they tell us that this problem has come in your device or this problem has come into some app and they'll ask you to install some app which provides them remote access and through that remote access they use uh, they use that remote access to uh, surveil your phone basically. So whatever information you have on your phone and whatever you do on your phone, let's say you're opening your UPI app and making transactions so that Forster can see what you are entering and what is your code so that he will be able to make uh, transactions on his own when you are not using that app. The last is impersonating genuine sellers. Nowadays we've seen many times people uh, search for uh, let's say any good or service on the website and whatever they see, let's say we see many things, let's say we see ads for many uh, services or many, let's say I wanted to get a haircut. So I would look for a barber which will come to my home because of the COVID-19 situation we had. And we search for barber and then we see the first option that comes up after Google search and then we just connect to that website or call that person and we see the number and we call that person. And that person is basically a foster and he has used uh, search engine optimization other ad services to bring his number on the forefront and we end up being duped by the uh, availability of that number on the topmost search result. And we call that number and we make the transaction or make the advanced booking and that person doesn't come. I gave you the example of a barber but many a times we end up uh, losing a lot more amount than a barber fee. We have talked about how the uh, journey of fintech has been, how financial technology has uh, affected the financial services we use in this day. And uh, we talked about how all of the modes of uh, using those financial services are targeted by cyber fosters. And we talked about many modes. The main purpose of this was to know that there are many ways 
that cyber fraudsters are always coming up with. As the financial technology is taking its shape, cyber criminals are coming up with more and more newer ways. So that we need to aware ourselves and know about these things that are there in our mobile, that are there on the web browser we are accessing. And uh, we need to be aware and we need to always be on our toes. Now I'll uh, request uh, my colleague, Mr. Deepak ji, to continue with the apps we had uh, app for different app for investment apps digital loan apps earning website apps and gaming frauds which uh, we'll be talking about in detail so that we can understand how they have been affecting the citizens of this country thank you thank you and it's really well covered about this uh, fintech ecosystem and i would like to say one thing here uh, we know about these technologies and we know about these things uh, how these things are operating in our cyber system but uh, when we talk about the fundamental perspective, so we are lacking somewhere. And we have seen during this COVID situation and uh, various crimes has been, uh, you say, uh, cyber ke chetra mein, kafi crimes rise kar rahe aur kahin kahin sare crimes, they are linked with financial frauds. So similarly, uh, on in our last series, we have covered about various uh, crimes pertaining to financial fraud, but this time we are talk talking about Mostly, and the top one like uh, digital loan, investment apps, earning, money earning frauds, uh, or you can see gaming based applications uh, frauds basically. And we have seen various news pertaining to the same thing, not only with the financial part, even though uh, various incidents as well. So, starting with the first one, like when you talk about the digital loan or lending application uh, through uh, mobile application, basically, when you're talking about. So as we see that ki kafi, I mean, in during this economic stress, or you can say when the need of the money during this uh, situation, like many people, long ka job chala gaya, they're searching for jobs as well, or sometimes uh, they may looking for some good investment, they may looking for some uh, money earning schemes on online, or you can say a Google perspective. So they are saying like they are getting some information through, through what, through uh, various search engines, you can say through various mobile application, various platform generally which we are using. It could be, you know, WhatsApp, it could be Telegram, it could be anything. But the modus is very clear. Modus like the way, like how generally we are initiating these things. Like generally these things are propagating through either through our friends, through our neighbors or through sometimes we having a phone, we having digital things in our hand. We search ourselves on Google and we search like loans in good interest or like whatever the information. But we have seen one thing like maximum situation in the person or the company who are those providing a loan basically. So they don't ask much more information. Similarly, they may ask few information like PAN card, PAN Aadhaar details, or maybe some sort of referral, two or three referral. And immediately may they ask for to install some application or through that application, maybe they can say like you can upload some data like pan other something so you have to just allow some permission and similarly what is happening there when we allow those permission even we do we don't know exactly what kind of information they are silently taking from our phone initially they are more focusing about the contact part and the contacts contain entire information about our friends relatives and those vs which we have saved in these things and ek bar mein contact chala gaya and similarly further this information they may use for other different cyber crime perspective Similarly, second level may they won't ask too much detail, so easily loan avail ho jata hai. Loan lene ke baad even uh, refund time pe kafi aise case bhi hai, kafi aise incident bhi hai, jahan pe logon ne loans ko repay bhi kar diya hai. Aur kafi aise case hui hai, jahan pe loan agar nahi hua hai, delay ho gaya hai, to unhe threatening messages bhi aane shuru hui hai, log messages bhi aai. Aur messages ko agar aap dekhenge to, I'll show you some sort of information like through this uh, presentation, like uh, you can see These are some information on the presentation. You can see like uh, uh, this example perspective on uh, some well-known platform. Earlier, they, were, they uh, simply they, they, they chat or they message in very proper uh, perspective, like proper English and proper things are there. Now time when you see, Aajkal messages aise aate hain ki aap read bhi nahi kar sakte, aap unhe padh bhi nahi sakte, itne situations aise rehti hain. Even though, second thing is the second image which is talking about like the platform where they are circulating this information. 
they are misusing some well known platforms like you know amazon flipkart or any any big thing so usually people think like yeah agar amazon word hai to shayad ye usse link hoga and we don't know exactly yes these things are linked or not and similarly these things may came up through some a uh, random website it could be any dot in dot vip dot com dot something and the legitimacy of the website is you know it's not not correct similarly when you moving ahead about the investment based application the first one is called loan based perspective thing and similarly when you talk about the second one is investment apps even the same thing they are approached through you know various ads it's not about the ads pertaining to platform ye yeah, ads kahin pe bhi aa sakte hain aksar hum notice karte hain कि जो वेलोन प्लेटफॉर्म है जैसे हम रील देखते हैं या फिर इंस्टाग्राम से या फिर व्हाट्सएप ट्विटर है या फिर जितने भी वेल नोन टॉप ओ टी टी प्लेटफॉर्म है इवन दो सो समाइम्स इसी आर में हैकर्स या क्रिमिनल्स या थ्रेट एक्टर्स कह लीजिए जब कोई कैंपेन इनिशिएट करते हैं तो इस तरह का फेक एडवर्टीजमेंट दे रन एंड सिमिलरली दे ट्राई टू ल्यू द पीपल थ्रू डिफरेंट डिफरेंट इमेजेस एंड वीडियोज एंड यूजली पीपल थिंक लाइक दिस इज अ लेजिटिमेट थिंग एंड सिंपली वॉट इज हैपनिंग they may ask for the simple different different things like they may liquidate they may ask for liquidity returns offered to earn money and they may ask for fraudulent investment app through by installing i mean they may request that you may use if you want to use this service you may have 5% discount or 10% discount something like that or maybe if you refer this application to some different people so even though you will get good discount so something like these kind of tactics generally they are using and sometimes it's not only the application sometimes it's also linked with some sort of websites and usually we have seen various websites like dot in to jab dot in website hum dekhte hain simple mein dot in to hame lagta hai indian website hai aksar to is cheez mein hum sochte hain ki india ho gaye to hum is pe study kar sakte hain access kar sakte hain https bhi hai to safe hoga to kafi aise concepts misconceptions bhi rehte hain jahan pe usually people samajhte nahi aur they dig into these all things similarly कभी कभी ऐसा होता है इन्वेस्टमेंट एप्स में नॉर्मली कि आप अगर अच्छा पैसा अर्न कर रहे हैं और आप उस एप्लीकेशन में अगर अच्छा ग्रोथ दिखा भी रहा होता है तो हम सोचते हैं कि हमारा प्रॉफिट हो रहा है और जनरली हम ये चीज क्रिप्टो पर्सपेक्टिव वाले स्कैम्स में काफी हमने नोटिस किया है देखा भी है और ऐसे केसेज ओपन सोर्स में भी अवेलेबल है जहां पर एप्लीकेशन पे काफी हाइक दिखाएगा कि यस काफी अच्छा प्रॉफिट हो रहा है एन अ टाइम एन यू ट्राई टू रिट्रीव और विदड्रॉ द मनी इवन from the same side they may ask like you have to pay some sort of 10% or you may use that application a uh, withdraw karna hai to aap is tarikh mein withdraw kijiye taki aapko tax gst aapko na bharna pade to aise kafi scams bhi hue hain jahan pe kafi applications aake chali ja chuki hain so similarly these things are linked with the investments and some examples are on your screen you can see that is the thing like people may uh, ask in very simple like they may they may use or misuse you know, native platforms like banking ka koi logo bana kar ke even we have seen certain cases where jahan pe youtube inspector ban kar ke fake image ko morphing kar ke they are targeting to the people or the people who are not well versed and they thought that ki agar ye youtube pe aa gaya to kitni badnami hogi aur badnami ke dar se sari cheeze aur the second aapko dekh rahe hain jaise ye number use kiya gaya hai second mein these are the plus 62 number or like plus 1 plus matlab non इंडियन नंबर जो नॉन नाइन वन प्लस नंबर के अलावा जो नंबर्स होते हैं ऐसे नंबर्स को यूज करके दे ट्राई टू कनेक्ट एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम दीज नंबर आर इजीली अवेल थ्रू सम सॉर्ट ऑफ यू नो एप्लीकेशन और इस तरह से यहां से दे आर ट्राई टू चैट एंड ट्राई टू आस्क टू कम ऑन टू अवर प्लेटफॉर्म दे विल गिव समॉर्ट ऑफ बेनिफिट एज वेल नाउ अ टाइम दे मे क्रिएट सम सॉर्ट ऑफ यू नो यूजर अकाउंट एज वेल एंड दे मे से दैट कि आप अपना अकाउंट चेक कीजिए आपको फिफ्टी रुपीज या इंडियन करेंसी में कुछ पैसे आपको मिलेंगे विदड्रॉ करने के लिए दे मे आस्क आप इससे कनेक्ट कीजिए अपना कार डिटेल्स और सिमिलरली साइलेंटली दे मे आस्क योर डिटेल्स एंड दे सिंपली और साइलेंटली टेक दिस ऑल इन्फॉर्मेशन जरूरी नहीं कि यह इन्फॉर्मेशन दे मे मिस यूज ऑन द सेम टाइम आफ्टर सम टाइम मे बी दे कैन यूज आफ्टर वन मंथ थ्री मंथ सिक्स मंथ और एट मंथ और तब जाके कोई पैसे अगर करते हैं तो लगता है कि ये पैसे मेरे कहां से कटे और ये वेबसाइट्स कहां से मिली मूविंग अहेड वी हैव द नेक्स्ट वन दैट इज कॉल्ड अर्निंग वेबसाइट मनी अर्निंग अक्सर गेमिंग पर्सपेक्टिव कह लीजिए मनी अर्निंग पर्सपेक्टिव कह लीजिए कि ऐसे वेरियस एड्स आर देयर लाइक यू नो इफ आई एम सीइंग लूडो गेम फॉर एग्जांपल सो व्हेन यू सर्च लूडो ऑन Google Play Store यू हैव एम्पल यू हैव प्लेंटी ऑफ एप्लीकेशन लैक्स ऑफ एप्लीकेशंस आर देयर व्हिच आर टॉकिंग अबाउट लूडो गेम but even i don't know exactly which games are legit and which games are not like even not only a ludo part any sort of games any sort of study any sort of image editing application any sort of learning application translators you know anything 
So similarly, when you're talking about the earning application, so there is certain types of challenges. Games, you play the game. If you earn the game, अगर आपने football game में आपने चार goal में तीन goal आपने मार लिया, तो आपको इतना पैसा मिलेगा. If you want to invest more money into that one, तो ऐसे उनके steps होते हैं. So these are the hurdles, these are the steps, these are the pointers, and they simply ask some information. If you refer these things to the some uh, friends or, तो आपको आप ऐसे मिलेंगे. तो ये सब virtually चल रहा होता है. Usually यूजर को पता नहीं होता कि ये वर्चुअली पैसा जो है ये हम विद्रॉ करेंगे तो मिलेगा नहीं मिलेगा इवन दो वेन दे ट्राई टू रिपोर्ट समवेयर सो सिचुएशन समथिंग एल्स सिमिलरली वेन टॉक अबाउट नेशनल लाइक द प्लेटफॉर्म वी हैव सीन वेरियस थिंग्स आर यूटिलाइजिंग बाय वेल नोन प्लेटफॉर्म लाइक यू नो व्हाट्सएप इज देयर टेलीग्राम इज ऑल्सो देयर बट अवेयरनेस इज द की दैट इज द इंपॉर्टेंट लाइक पूरा इंटरनेट में अगर ऐसी चीजें चल रही होती है अगर हम ही अपने आप में इंटरनेट एटिकेट्स मेंटेन नहीं करेंगे तो हम कितने लोगों को ब्लेम करते रहेंगे सो so, पहला अपना पर्सपेक्टिव है कि वी शुड अवेयर विद दिस प्लेटफॉर्म्स विच इज लेजिट एंड विच इज नॉट लेजिट मूविंग एड द सेकेंड सम एग्जाम्पल्स लाइक यू नो इट्स नॉट ओनली द थिंग्स विच वी सी हम जैसे देख रहे हैं सामने जो इमेजेस इमेज में कुछ एप्लीकेशन है इनके आइटम्स देख करके इनके रेटिंग्स देख करके हमें यह लगता है कि These are the legit application. Even though they were in Google Play Store, so से ज़्यादा Play Store से पूरे मतलब आप चेक करेंगे. It's not only the Google and Apple and everything. There are various Play Stores are there where they are circulating these all things. Hence we are using Android, so we are uh, having the Google Play Store. Similarly, when you're talking about, I mean, uh, what you, Apple, so they have uh, app stores for the Apple different. So similarly, काफी ऐसे third party app stores भी हैं. तो जो screen में जो आपको image दिख रहा है basically that is some application which was developed by one developer and he that developer created various fake things for collecting harvesting and initiating the data for the cyber crime perspective so that is the one indicator and if you see about the the second example like uh, the image basically even they are asking for some sort of connectivity some sort of uh, talk point basically which is there next uh, slide is talking about uh, the एप्लीकेशन यू सी दिस इज वन एप्लीकेशन इसी एप्लीकेशन का जो बगल में बीच में जो इमेज है दैट इज द सेंटर वन दैट इज द वेबसाइट बेसिकली सो एप्लीकेशन भी सेम इज आसिंग फॉर द नंबर एंड जस्ट सिंपल पासवर्ड एंड गेट इन टू दिस एंड पैरली द सेम थिंग इज दर सो दिस इज द इंटरफेस फॉर द सेम थिंग एंड वी आर थिंकिंग लाइक या दिस इज द करेक्ट वन नाउ आई हैव वॉट वी हैव वी हैव सम एग्जाम्पल्स फ्रॉम द सर्च इंजन रिमेंबर इट्स नॉट ओनली द any top search engine it could be any search engine where we are searching but when we see the first call ad ad stand for advertisement similarly when you talk about instagram and all we have you know sponsored something if you facebook mein aap dekhenge ek platform pe so aisa nahi hai ki sari cheez fake hai but maximum cheeze misuse karke pop up karke jab cheeze aati hai to hame lagta hai ye cheeze correct hai and sometimes these are playing as a foul play basically so when we search about any earn money and we have search result तो अगर हमारे पास अच्छे एडवांस ब्लॉकर्स है तो हम ये ऐसे रिजल्ट आते नहीं पॉपअप्स नहीं होते हैं पर यूजुअली जहां प्लेन इंटरनेट पे हम जब सर्च करते हैं प्लेन सर्च इंजन में हम जब कुछ ऐसा सर्च करते हैं तो हमें काफी एड्स पॉपुलेट होते हैं हमें लगता है कि गूगल दिखा रहा है या कोई आए तो वो सही ही होगा एंड आफ्टर थ्री फोर फाइव रिजल्ट देन वी हैव अ रियल वेबसाइट सो नाउ मूविंग एट लास्ट वन दैट इज कॉल्ड गेमिंग गेमिंग फॉर परस्पेक्टिव एंड इज सीरियस कंसर्न नाव डेज एंड वी हैव सीन वेरियस इंसिडेंट्स सो लाइक Initially or in very prompt manner, just want to explain like the threat vector call addictions होते हैं no doubt side impact में pros भी हैं cons भी हैं पर majorly हम जब देखते हैं कि इस gaming platform में काफी cyber bullying के शिकार भी होते हैं users talking about the risk of losing money काफी लोगों के पैसे भी जा चुके even they don't know because what they need they just need a mobile phone and to purchase any ammo or any sort of you know levels or something so there is one thing. You remember exactly like some malwares could be there. Malware, malicious applications, malicious functionalities could be embedded onto the application. That is one. Privacy problems is also there. We don't know about the privacy part. That is a very detailed in detail when you check about the application. Hidden fees is also there. But the major point is about the attack vectors when you talk about like open source. Hence, it is an open source. So, कोई भी open source application है उसको repackage करके डाल सकता है. Second, third party websites is also there. And third is Uh, uh, chargebacks and returns is there. Targeting gamers IP is there. Phishing, fake mobile versions. Fake mobile version को देख लीजिए कि जरूरी नहीं कि UI जैसा बताया बिल्कुल कि user interface बिल्कुल similar रहता है. And finally, what we have, we have the things. So final one is the red flags we have to understand through. It could be from various website. It could be there is no information about the founder. There is no information about the basically registration details. No information about the their Uh, uh, who is the developer basically contact details emails and everything is there which is not properly 
आप रिव्यूज की बात करेंगे रिव्यूज भी फेक डाले जाते हैं फाइव रेटिंग फोर रेटिंग यह कोई बड़ी चीज नहीं तो आप प्रॉपरली जब चेक करेंगे उसके एक्सपीरियंस को तो काफी चीजें आपको मालूम चलेंगे कि कौन से एप्लीकेशन हमारे लिए लजिट है कि नहीं है एंड द लास्ट वन अबाउट द थिंग जैसे एग्जाम्पल में मैंने स्क्रीन डाल रखा है जैसे एक एप्लीकेशन है फौजी करके एंड इवन इट वॉज नॉट लॉन्च बट नेट पे बीटा वर्जन इस तरह की चीजें आ गई और लोगों ने डाउनलोड भी किए तो इस तरह से लोगों के क्रेडेंशियल्स कंटेंट्स फोन या मॉनिटरी परस्पेक्टिव पे इट कुड बी एनी थिंग सो दीज थिंग्स आर देयर वेयर देयर एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस इज कॉल्ड स्पिन स्पिन व्हील वाला स्पिन व्हील में हम काफी देखते हैं कैसे व्हाट्सएप पे मैसेजेस भी आते हैं जहां पे स्पिन करो और यू विल विन समथिंग अभी रिसेंटली टाटा मोटर्स का भी काफी दिखाया था और वीमेंस डे में भी काफी ऐसे आते हैं ऑर्नामेंट्स या कभी ऐसा डे होता है तो दैट इज द सो तो वेरियस थिंग्स आर देयर सो दिस इज द मेजर ट्रेंड आई हैव कवर्ड कि हमें कैसे समझना है कैसे बचना है बट मेजर चीज है हमारी अवेयरनेस सो आई वुड से अगेन लाइक टू to come up the financial cyber fraud awareness perspective what is required for the prevention point uh now we are coming towards the uh, culmination of our presentation and we need to understand this we are bringing in front of you all these topics uh not to make you understand everything every idea in this single session it is just to start a conversation start awareness and pe- make people aware uh, that is why we are having this cyber jagrukta and we need to talk about these things and we need to understand we need to talk about in the classes we need to talk about in our friend circles so that what is happening with that mode and what is happening in that uh, c- certain kind of cyber crime or financial cyber crime that is so uh, on your screen you see four links that we have provided that can be uh, you know breaking the ice resource for us so the first one is ncrp portal which is a component of uh, indian cyber crime coordination center that is i4c and mha and we always put up various resources various advisories various papers that we come up with so that we can talk about new trends that are happening in the field of cyber crime second is rbi kehta hai that uh, link is also doing very well in talking about digital literacy and how we should avail these banking financial services third one is cashless india it's an initiative of government of india and it talks about how uh, india is using all those services which are making us cashless and we can use all those online and digital services to make uh, digital payments and other investments the fourth one is information security education and awareness that is isea uh, we all know about this and they are doing great work in the field of information security awareness uh on the bottom of the slide you see what we should do in case of online financial fraud the first one is uh, you should call 1930 and then you should complete your complaint in the website that is uh, cybercrime.gov.in and then uh, file a grievance at the bank in the last slide we come it is uh, about all the initiatives of i4c in different social media platforms to talk about awareness and to talk about latest trends in the field of cyber crime so that we can know about what are the financial cyber crimes that are coming up and what we should know and what how we should avail a certain service we should not be over enthusiastic about some certain uh, service which has just come up and we should try to learn about what is in the uh, back of it and we should be more aware of those things and yeah i'll conclude with this thank you oh. all right so thank you so much and uh, like you mentioned the financial cyber fraud awareness and uh, said repeatedly that awareness actually is the key so we all are using internet banking uh, we are using these uh, banking services some or the other how be it wallets be it atm be it credit cards debit cards and uh, other uh, things as well so we need to be aware and uh, we need to stay away from the fraudsters so um, we don't have much time left but i would still like to ask you one yeah. question and then will wrap up so you mentioned no cash fraud of atm yeah. and you said that uh, when the money is stuck uh, in the machine itself yeah. the person calls the helpline number which is 1930 yeah. so when uh, the helpline number uh, someone calls and uh, what is the solution they suggest at that moment right then and there uh the specific fraud we are talking about uh the no cash fraud it's about an attachment a device which is placed under the uh outlet of the atm device okay. and when that happens it's the then and there kind of fraud and nobody will just come to that atm and help you with that if the guard so we should be aware about that ki that kind of fraud is also happening in the, in the uh this uh in this digital space right now and we 
can be a victim to that thing. And whenever that happens, uh, we should know we should not avail those ATMs which are far in remote areas. We should uh, avail uh, the services of the ATMs which are in the middle of the crowded area or where guard is placed, so that those ATMs are not, uh, you know, those ATMs are not placed with those devices which can be uh, used for no cash fraud. Okay, so would you like to add something? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, most of the things cover physically, we have to also check like that we are putting the keypad in the camera is properly working or not working, and you can use the skimmer's device that you are using, you can also check that. So there are many fundamental things that are already available. You can also see how the devices are, how we have to keep the attention of things physically. क्योंकि यहाँ पे फिजिकली सारा काम हो रहा है फिजिकली समझना बहुत जरूरी है कि कैसे कैसे हमें निकालना है पैसे नहीं निकल रहे हैं हमें कहाँ कॉल करना है इज देर इन गार्ड इज नॉट देयर लाइक दिस बेसिकली Absolutely. So these are the precautions our experts just mentioned. If you are next time going to the ATM or using your credit card, debit card, any of these things, then please be very careful and take all the precautions possible. So uh, let me tell you about the quiz which will be given to you. The link will be given to you on 17th of June. That will be next Friday. So all you have to do for now is register yourself. Open the website CIET. Yes, that's the home page. If you see the options here, that's events is one of the options and scroll it down. The second last option is workshop slash training. If you'll click here and scroll it down a little bit, this is the current activity. If you can see 1st June to 17th of June, Cyber Jagrukta Divas series, financial safety in cyberspace. Just click in here and uh, this is everything you need to know regarding this series. Objectives, who all can participate, the schedule of the program, how to participate. This is the link given. All you have to do is scan your QR code or uh, click on this link here and uh, fill up the form. And uh, if you have not seen our earlier sessions, uh, two sessions have been done and this is the third session and you can watch it here which is NCRT official, our YouTube channel. And uh, here the quiz link will be given to you uh, next week, next Friday. If you have any feedback, you can submit using this link. So this is everything regarding uh, our theme of this month and uh, which is financial safety in cyberspace. So this was a very informative session. I would like to thank both our experts, Sri Sanjay Kumar and Dr. Deepa Kumar for being with us, for joining uh, us in this program and sharing all this info important and necessary information to all our viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all our viewers for watching this program and uh, stay here, don't go anywhere, we are coming up with another special program of ours that is Sayog and the topic of discussion would be strengthening resilience and maximizing the learning opportunities among students. Please keep on watching PME Vidya channels and also NCRT official our YouTube channel. Thank you once again, take care, Namaskar.